Well, look, they're shopping, you know, that pick. So they're in a position to talk to everybody. They're going to talk to everybody. And there's going to be a multitude of ways they can go about rebuilding their team, a team that is totally bereft of talent. And some of that chatter already picked up down in Mobile. And you've got a new regime there who I, I would say did not necessarily uh, have a glorious uh, indoctrination into the NFL. And you've now got a new team president there, right, in Kevin Warren. And I think he's going to have some of his own ideas about some things. He didn't bring these two in. You know, the, the, probably Trace Armstrong, the agent, former Bear, has as much to do with them being there as anybody in his relationships in that organization. And how do you give yourself, like, how, how do you give yourself sort of a boost, right? How do you try to distance yourself from your early body of work or, you know, some stuff that, I mean, like the Claypool trade. There's a lot of weird stuff that's going on there, right? Well, how do you do it? Hey, well, that quarterback got hurt. He's probably going to get hurt again. We didn't bring him. Those other guys brought him in. You know what I mean? That was Nagy and those jamokes. Like, we're going to go get our guy, right? That way you, you sort of buy yourself new time. You try to reset the clock. And because of where they're sitting, again, as well, in the draft order, there's going to be a lot of different creative ways that they can move picks around, <clears throat> move a player like him around, and maybe reposition themselves not just in this draft, but for the following draft, right? Because that's another way where you're in a rebuild and first year wasn't necessarily linear, right? And people are questioning some of your moves and wondering what, what direction are you actually going in? Did you get enough for some of these players? Did you give up too much for others? What was the thinking at the beginning of the year, if you were just going to trade Roquan Smith anyway. Um, so looking at that in its totality, they now could come away from this saying, we're going to win the draft this year. We're in position to win the draft next year. Um, Caleb Williams, the, it's always the, the Caleb Williams is going to be better than any of these guys anyway. And we might be in position to get him a year from now. Again, People I really trust in this league who don't BS me, two of them volunteered. Like, just the vibe they're getting, the feeling they're getting is the Bears want to make moves and Fields could very well be a part of a package they make. Not that they're just limited to one thing. I mean, I think they could make multiple trades. They, they could make a trade before the draft. Wouldn't shock me if they then moved around the draft board again during the draft. Uh, they got a lot of holes to fill. What about the quarterback in Baltimore? What are you hearing on what's going on with Lamar and the Ravens? And your just your thoughts on this Jeff Munkin hire as OC, and does it change anything for you and maybe Lamar's decision process? It has nothing to do with Lamar Jackson. I mean, it's John Harbaugh doing his due diligence, um, trying to find the best offensive football coach he can find to get this team to have a semblance of an effective and efficient passing game. Um, there's no, there was no role for Lamar Jackson in this. There's not great lines of communication between them and Lamar Jackson about a contract, let alone about staffing issues for a coaching staff um, at a time where he's never made a penny above what the CBA said he should make over five years. Like, no, no, he's, he's not interested in helping them put their staff together. Um, I'm not sure how interested he is in playing football for the, them again. Certainly not at any of the price points they've ever put in front of him over years, 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 plural of this negotiation with a unanimous MVP. Um, I like to hire Todd Munkin. I've been a fan of his for a long time. I think you go back to his Bucks teams. Uh, he was at the forefront of early down play action, throwing on first down. Um, he attacks every blade of grass, and he's a wizard in the screen game. And then guys like J.K. Dobbins have been and, and Devin Duvernay have been way underused in the horizontal passing game. And I think he'll fix that. I don't think he'll work with Lamar Jackson. Um, I don't think that's happening. Uh, they've got until Mar March 7th is the real deadline here. That, that's the deadline to place a tag on a player. And if they don't have a deal done by March 7th, and I'd be shocked if they do, I don't think they can risk going into the offseason with a player on a $44.7 million franchise tag who doesn't get paid until week one. And he's not going to be in that building. He's not going to be doing press conferences, talking to the media, saying how great it is to work with Todd Munkin. They're going to be installing another offense, and he's going to be in South Florida. Um, he's got no, and it's not a holdout. He's not doing anything other than following the CBA, which they haven't given me a penny over what they contractually had to with a CBA that was negotiated when I was in middle school. So guess what? I'm not showing up for your dog and pony shows. I'm not showing up for your fake football. I'm not here to bail you out. Get me somewhere where they respect me and they'll pay me what I'm worth. Otherwise, I'll see you 72 hours before week one and we'll see how that goes, suckers. 
So yeah. if that's what they want to do, that's the road they want to go down. You've been super naive about this entire thing the whole time. You thought you'd get over on this kid. You could keep doing that. Or when you only have five draft picks and you don't have much of a roster on offense and your owner doesn't want to spend big or even moderate to buy free agents, then you better trade him for a haul and try to win 17-14 with somebody else at quarterback. What do the Colts do? do i mean they're they're sitting at four they want to move up you know you you had the best nickname ever for 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 jim ursay uh calling him the honky tonk man what is what is going on there where are they going to end up well they're going to end up with a you know a a young cheap quarterback i mean i I think that's what it was all about and i wrote about this at length in the washington post talked a lot of people to league when he did that jeff saturday thing i mean his own coaches thought he was tanking. So, I mean, he, he can say, you know, he, he can come out and say whatever he was doing. <clears throat> but it looked like a guy who said, enough, I'm taking over this franchise. I want to be able to pick a quarterback, and I want to be in a position to at least get one of the three falling to me um, or, or not have to move up that far to get the guy in my choice. And here we sit, and he's got a young, malleable, first-time head coach who he can keep him under my thumb. And he's already turned Chris Ballard into a puppet. So – yeah, like now I'm going to go get my quarterback, and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't stop yammering on at the the press conference the other day. Uh, do I think he would be prime fodder to go to one? I, I absolutely do. Um, he's only really won one way, right? <laughs> he took quarterbacks with the first overall pick. They're both generational talents. Yeah. No, still for all that he won one with both of them. Came out and said when he drafted, I'm old enough to remember him drafting Andrew Luck saying Andrew Luck's going to win multiple Super Bowls for me. He didn't go to one. Careful what you say, honky tonk. But it's kind of a little bit more like mouth of the south. I, I think he's he he's someone who obviously is in a situation now where he's wheeling and dealing. Um, he's the central figure in that organization from a football operation standpoint, and no one's no one's really going to be able to say no to him. So uh, yeah, I, I, he's he's going to have a rookie quarterback. Um, I don't think he'd be someone who would want fields in return, moving around, this or that. I, I just think it'd be more about him being in position to pick his guy first overall because that's that's been his bag. That's the only way he's won. You would think Arizona probably won an offensive dude just because of Kyler Murray and they're tied down with him because of the contract. Were you surprised that they went the defensive coach route as their head coach? No, I'm not surprised that they did. I, I am surprised that um, – it wasn't Lou Anarumo, I think, as a, a better body of work, a longer tenure in the league. Um, and frankly, I think his, I don't know anybody on that side of the ball has done a better job than him the last two years, Gannon included. Um, I think <laughs> – irony of ironies, the guy who I think would have been perfect there is Steve Wilkes, who, who, who they stained with a terrible season – one year and kicked him out and scapegoated him, even though the GM picked all the coaches and put the staff together and not Steve Wilkes. Like, I think Leslie Frazier. Like, I think somebody from the defensive side of the ball who could maybe put some guardrails up for Kyler Murray, whose job description isn't rebuild Kyler Murray. I'll find somebody on my staff to do that. Um, But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to focus on the other side of the ball. Um, I'm not going to make my entire being about this quarterback who's been overpaid and, and pampered and catered to. Um, I'm going to run a football team, and he's going to fall in line, or he's not. Um, you know, not that I think like a Leslie Frazier in particular would be really good at being a bad cop, but I almost felt felt like there, you know, someone's got to come in there with a little bit of a of a tenure and a pedigree, preferably on the defensive side of the ball, and maybe lay down the law a little bit, and and you know, let let this kid know that there's a new sheriff in town 